In this Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree video, we're going to be going over a full guide on how to beat Radan, Consort of Mikula. This is definitely the hardest from soft boss I've ever fought out of every souls like they've done in the past 15 years. He has fast movesets, insane AoEs, and even an almost impossible to dodge attack. It goes without saying that you should not ignore leveling your scouter tree fragments all the way to 20 if you have to, as this is the final boss in the DLC. The trick to this boss is fighting as close as you possibly can for the entire fight as it's basically mandatory to dodge his AoEs in phase 2 and is useful for getting extra damage in between some of his combos from both phases. If you've completed the Theolier questline, you should be able to summon both him and Anspach for this fight, but keep in mind that Redan's HP will scale super high if you summon both at the same time. For Talismans, I recommend Dragon Crest Great Shield for physical negation, Fine Crucible Feather Talisman for a special backstep on the impossible to dodge attack, and Golden Braid for holy negation. To start off, when you enter the arena, he's almost always going to do this rush attack that stops you from using summons or buffing up after you enter. So keep in mind if you're buffing up, try to do it before you enter, and if you're trying to summon, try to do it after you dodge his attack. You can dodge this initial attack by dodging into it at the last second, and then you can get about a heavy attack of damage in afterwards. His basic and most common combo is the following. A right foot stomp, into an overhead sword slash, into a quick double sword sweep, into an overhead sword slash, and then a ground explosion. He uses this move a bunch throughout the fight, so it's definitely worth learning the timing. Dodge after a delay when he does the right foot stomp, then after another delay, dodge twice in quick succession, then dodge two more times, both with a delay for the overhead and the ground explosion. You should kind of be dodging into Radan for all of these, with a slight deviation to the left or right. It's worth noting that after you roll that quick double attack, there is actually a small opening for exactly one light attack with most weapons, so try to get that damage in if you can. He has one other super long combo. We'll start with a right sword sweep, then do a left sword attack, a fast double sweep, another fast double sweep, and then one more delayed attack. For this combo, roll the first attack, then dodge after a very slight delay for the left sword sweep, then delay your next three dodges for his three double sweep attacks. Again, there is an opening between the fourth and fifth hit for exactly one light attack where you can get some damage in. And after dodging it all, you can get one heavy attack in. Sometimes he won't do that final delayed attack, so keep that in mind when you're dodging this. Those two combos are his bread and butter, but he has a few other difficult moves as well. To start, let's go over the infamous cross slash attack. When you heal at the wrong time or attack too late, Radon will often use this move where he attacks two times in succession with his blades, then do a final cross slash. This attack is actually basically impossible to dodge when you have no added gimmicks, requiring frame perfect timing and altitude positioning to avoid it. That being said, after doing some testing, there are a few ways to counter it. You could dodge it normally with frame perfect timing, block it with a shield, parry it, or use the fine crucible feather talisman to get iframes on back steps and dodge it with an early back step into a quick dodge and then a delayed roll. If you didn't parry, after he finishes the combo, you can get a heavy attack in. I definitely think this is going to get nerfed in the foreseeable future, but for now, these were the best options I tested. Another 3 hit combo with his sword starts with an overhead right swing, then after a slight delay he does 2 sweeps in quick succession. If you dodge this, you can only get 1 light attack in before his next move. One more super short 2 hit combo is his right sweep into a double sword left sweep. Despite this attack being relatively easy to dodge compared to others, it has a massive window where you can land a heavy attack if you dodge this correctly. Next he has something kind of like a grab move. He'll slowly lift his swords up, slash them upwards, then after a delay slash them back down. If you get hit by the first attack, you get launched into the air and hit by his downward slash, so learn the timing for this one and don't forget to dodge the second hit after dodging the first. When the boss is far away from you, sometimes he'll do a jumping attack. For this attack, he'll jump up and do a roll in the air, then crash down with both of his swords. He has a chance to jump again and then do one more jumping attack. Either way, if you correctly dodge this, you can get one heavy attack in afterwards. If you find yourself having trouble with his random second attack, just do one light attack after his first, as that will give you some time to roll if he does the second move. Next up, he also has a blood flame attack. This attack is actually very easy to avoid once you know the trick to dodging it. First, dodge the initial thrust by dodging into him, and then sprint behind him to get one light attack in. By going behind him, you avoid both his slash attack and the aftershock explosion, and can even get one light attack in. Just make sure you end up directly behind him, as the explosion will hit you if you're on his side. Lastly for the basic moves, he has a retreating attack where he does a cross slash. 
Most of the time it's safe to do a light attack right after, but I've had a few occasions where I got punished for it, so it's probably not worth it to attack and you should probably just wait after you dodge. Moving on to the gravity moves, let's start with this gravity meteor move. This attack actually has 3 hits in the combo. First when he slashes his swords down, then when he slashes upwards and rises, and lastly the ranged meteors. If you're too close to him initially, dodge twice in quick succession to dodge the first two slash hits. For the meteors, run away in the opposite direction until the meteors get close, then run to the left or right and then jump. His other gravity move sucks you in, then he either does a grab move or a special gravity move. You can roll the initial pull by dodging with good timing, but if you do get pulled, it's actually pretty easy to avoid damage. You can just spam roll away from him to dodge either the gravity AoE or the grab attack. In the second phase though, you definitely want to dodge that initial pull as the following attacks are really difficult to dodge. Moving on to phase 2, he'll start this phase at around 60% health, cleansing him of any status effects and stopping all attacks with a cutscene. For this phase, all of his attacks will summon an AoE of holy beams in front of Radon, and he gets a bunch of absolutely disgusting combos that will knock just about anyone into the 14th dimension the first time they see it. 90% of the time, the first thing he'll do is summon a giant AoE of holy damage. Before he does this, you get the time to drink about one flask, and then you'll have to run as soon as you see him charging it. This attack has a very unforgiving window if you have even the slightest delay, so make sure you run in a straight line as fast as you can, or avoid it with something like Raptor of the Mists, or block it with a good holy negating shield like the Black Steel Great Shield. In this phase, his attacks from phase 1 haven't actually changed too much. His bread and butter combos have the exact same timing, just with beams in front of Radon. Dodge slightly into him for every attack like I mentioned in phase 1, and you shouldn't be hit by a single thing. This also applies for the huge holy AoE that replaces his ground explosion. Just roll into it and you won't take any damage. He also gets one new combo that has the exact same timing as the stomp attack except it starts with an overhead right swing and I thought I'd mention that here. The blood flame attack is the exact same with no change and the impossible cross slash attack is avoided basically the same way for every method. For the jumping attack, all you need to do is dodge to the left or right to avoid the straight line of beams. You also do the same thing for the quote unquote grab attack from phase 1. Any other basic move from his phase 1 can just be dodged into. The only attack from phase 1 that is considerably harder to dodge is his meteor attack. The first part of this attack is the same. Avoid the first two hits, then run away from the meteors and jump right or left at the last moment. However, after that he has additional attacks. He'll do 4 after image attacks before teleporting onto you for a 5th slash, summon a straight line of beams, and then finally does a massive holy AoE. To avoid this, run away after jumping the meteors to get out of range of the 4 after images. Then dodge into him veering to the left or right for his 5th slash to avoid that straight line of AoEs that comes after the slash. Then after a short delay, dodge into him again for the big AoE. Moving on, let's go into his new basic moves of phase 2. He has a full arena holy AoE where he raises both swords and slashes them forwards. Dodge into this with good timing and it shouldn't hit you. He now has an actual grab attack that will insta kill you if it hits you twice, but it can be dispelled using Mikola's rune. He also has a new dash attack where he starts glowing and dashes with after images to a set location. If you're close to him, you can literally just stand inside of him and not take any damage. He also has another dash attack that he sometimes uses when he's far away. He'll dash sideways, throw an after image at you, and then throw a slash attack at you. Just dodge into him twice and you should be able to avoid damage. You get the opening for about one light attack. He also has this new ranged attack where he'll hurl a holy discus at you, then do one slash after a short delay. You should try to get close after dodging this attack as he has a window for a whole heavy attack after he finishes the combo. Lastly, he'll do a meteor attack at around 40% health. For this one, run in the opposite direction as soon as you can and keep running until you can see the explosion reach your character. To finish this guide off, lastly but most importantly we have his new special combos. The first one is where he jumps into the air, does 3 after image attacks, then lands on top of you and does one of his combos. For this attack, the best way to avoid it is to run to the right, dodge the 4th attack, then dodge twice after a short delay for his basic combo. You can also roll into the after images, but it's really inconsistent so I don't recommend it. The next one is much more tricky, with a bunch of flashbangs in between his hits. Radon's swords will start glowing, he'll raise them up in a pattern, then do the following. Two quick sweeps, two more quick sweeps, a jumping attack, then a falling attack with a 360 AoE explosion. For this one, you want to dodge the first two quick sweeps with two quick rolls. Then after a delay, dodge only once for the other two quick sweeps, 
dodge again after delay for the jumping attack, and then dodge one last time for the falling attack. All you can really do for this is learn the timing, but you can also block it with the shield. And with that, that is every single attack in Radon's moveset explained. In summary, you want to dodge into him for basically every single attack, run away from the after image attacks, and try using everything in your disposal to challenge this boss. There is absolutely no shame in using a Mimic tier, as this is definitely the hardest boss from software has ever put out.